Okay. Hello, give me just a second. I'm gonna see if I can tag everyone. Oh, there goes my thing right off the bat. Right off the bat. I probably don't even need it on right now, but I'd like it to be hot whenever, um, whenever it is time to use it. Give me just a second though. Let me see if I can tag everyone. I am so excited. I'm also very nervous. Hello, hello. I see Emily is on. Let me see if I can tag everyone. Oh, it looks like I can. Did it do it? Yes, awesome. So I was able to tag everybody. So we should see some people popping in here in just a minute. Let me get back over here to the, the actual live. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Bumblebee Craft Foam class. This is a live interactive class. And then once the live is over, the replay will be available for you to watch indefinitely forever. Um, we are going to, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm really excited. I've not taught this type of craft before, so I'm hoping I do okay for you guys. Um, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask me because I want to make sure that I'm as clear and concise as possible for you guys. I want you to be successful um, and really enjoy this class and enjoy this craft. I am really, really liking making this kind of thing right now, so I want to share that with you guys. All right, so also, I know I have a lot of Makers Club members that are in here. Um, that is part of your membership. If you're a Makers Club member, you get um, any classes that I offer to the public for free at no cost to you. Um, and then if you are not a member of the Makers Club and you would like to be, Emily will tag, will put a little link in the comments so that um, you can sign up for the Makers Club if you'd like. All right, I am going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to want to start with is our styrofoam cube. Let me also really quick before I do get started, let me show you this. So here is the bumblebee. This is what we are going to be making today. Let me get a little bit closer because I really like to make sure people can see. It looks my, like my camera might be a little bit blurry. I hope not. Um, there we go. And then there's the back of him. And then I made a little ladybug as well that I wanted to share. We're going to be doing a whole series of these in the Makers Club. So if you want to, to do more of these, if you like this foam craft and you want to do more of these, um, we will be doing these in the Makers Club. Um, I'm working on a butterfly and a dragonfly as well right now that are going to be super adorable. Um, and they'll have a little bit different coloring. So I'm really excited to do that. And they're gonna be the, those will be the dragonfly butterfly besties that I was talking about early on. All right, let me grab my X-Acto knife real quick. So we're gonna start with our um, piece of uh, styrofoam. And this is two centimeters thick. And the craft foam, so I don't want you guys to get confused. When I say craft foam, I'm talking about this material right here. When I say styrofoam, this is what I'm talking about. The craft foam is two millimeters thick. This is what we're working with right now. There are different thicknesses of that as well. And then the styrofoam is two centimeters thick today for this project. All right, so what we're gonna do right now, once you have your, your, cute, your piece cut, um, you're going to you're going to want to cut off the edges because we don't want it to be a sharp edge. We want to round those edges off. So I'm going to get you down here a little bit closer with me while we work on this project so I can make sure you see real good. So give me just a second and let me zoom down a little closer. It might kind of shake the camera just a little bit while I'm doing it. All right. And I'm going to try and make sure that I keep my um, hot plate in view for you so that you can see what I'm doing pretty much at all times. That's what my hope is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and I've already done it just to kind of save some time. I did pre-cut my materials, um, but I'm not going to skip on any steps. I want to be really clear. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and shave the edges. And you don't want to take off too much. This is important. But I'm just going to kind of go like this and make sure that I'm staying in view. And I'm just going to kind of shave off the little corner pieces. And I, you can tell when you're cutting against 
the styrofoam because it kind of, it doesn't cut as cleanly, which um, that just happened on this piece. But if you're cutting the right direction, uh, it will cut very cleanly. And see that cut very cleanly. And I, like I said, I'm just cutting off a very, very, very tiny, tiny piece. I'm trying to make sure I stay in camera view. Um, this is a little bit different angle. I'm actually getting ready to start doing an overhead angle again, which I really, really enjoy. But um, I'm just kind of using my resources, the things that I have available to me at the moment. So I hope that you're able to see this really well. Again, I'm just shaving off those edges. I'm going to take a little bit more off of this one, just a hair. Oh, and another thing, I don't even know if I put this in the supply list. Doggone it. I mean, I didn't mention it on the um, video. I can't believe it. But this is another very important um, thing that you'll want to grab is a piece of sandpaper so that you can kind of smooth some of those edges. And I cannot believe I completely forgot. Okay, so also, so we've got the edges on all sides on both sides. So both sides of the cube, you want the edges shaved. Also, you want to get these little corners up here too. And I still have two that I need to get right here. So I'm just going to lay that down and take that corner off. And then I'll take this corner off. I hope you are all having a great day. Hi, Elizabeth. All right. Now, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me if there's something that I've left out or you're not real clear on. Make sure you ask. I want to help you. Okay, this is 150. I think it's called grain on. Let me check my other one. So, yeah. So, this is fine. So, it's 150 on the sandpaper grain. I really like the the grit of this it's not too um not not too raised but enough to where it'll smooth the surface uh, this type project you don't want a really really grainy um piece of sandpaper and i am i am beating it all up for sure Whoop. i don't think i'm gonna need this ball but Pick it up just in case. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this over and I'm going to start sanding down those rough edges, just rounding off every side. And it doesn't take much. It's actually, I'm just doing it very gently. I'm not like digging in or anything like that. The goal is not to take off a whole lot of the meat of the material. It's more just kind of smoothing those sharp edges that were still left with the uh, X-Acto knife. I want to make sure that the comments are still going up. Yep, good. Okay. And again, even the corners and these edges, you want everything just rounded. The It's important to have kind of a smooth rounding so that when you're shaping your um, foam here in a little bit, it'll shape, it'll be smooth. You won't have a hard edge. Hope everybody's having a good day today. Good, good start to their week. Like I said, I'm really excited to be sharing this with y'all because I think these are super cute. Great addition to your craft. I am the kind of maker that I'm always trying to learn new things. I'm all I'm very ADD too, so um, I love just kind of stimulating, I guess, that part of me. And it keeps me interested and motivated to craft. And it just it's just good. It feels good. It's therapy to me. I'm sure some of you can kind of relate. Just doing this whole thing I want to make sure I get all the edges and then I'll show you kind of what mine looks like so you can kind of gauge what you want yours to look like once I'm done just making sure I want this a little bit more rounded for me. okay 
Okay, and then right here. Okay, there is that. Let me wipe this off a little bit and then kind of get rid of this because this will be a mess later when we're doing other stuff. All right, so now we have our piece. The first piece that we're gonna want to work with is our piece of craft foam. And if you haven't watched the supply video that I did this morning, make sure that you jump over before you start this craft, you jump over and watch that supply video. It's important because there's some things that you need to um, know about beforehand just to be on the safe side, okay? Um, so right now you can see that this piece is two fingers width all the way around extra. So it's two fingers for sure. Maybe a little bit extra, but we don't have to be perfect. And then I just wrote on here so I could remember what piece this is because I was trying to keep everything organized. Um, but I'm just going to take, I'm going to grab my little stand that I made to kind of help me. And it's going to rest on top of here like this. Stay off. And then I'm gonna take my piece of foam and I have my, my heat press set to 310 degrees. I don't know if you can see that really good, but it's at 310 degrees and I like this temperature because it, it uh, softens the foam without doing any damage to it. Um, and this was just through trial and error for me, but I'm just gonna lay my little piece on here and you'll see when you first do it, the edges kind of curl up and then as it warms up, it relaxes. And I just kind of rub my hand. Let me scoot it just a little bit so you can see. I just kind of rub my hand and you'll notice it popped up. But I just make sure that middle area is real warm and it's not hot and you see it curled. Now I'm going to actually stand, I like to stand up. It just kind of helps me. And I'm, I'm applying a decent amount of pressure to both sides, okay? And I, you can see, I mean, I'm applying a good amount of pressure. There's kind of, you kind of have to play with it and see how much pressure is good without being too much pressure. And then I'm just gonna kind of hold on to that, keeping that going down for just a minute while it cools off. And it won't take very long. All right, so now I'm left with a little a bunch of extra, right? So I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut this extra off. And you're gonna see me trim down more. I just like to cut off this much to start with. Okay, now I'm gonna throw that away because it's used. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece out of here and reuse this styrofoam uh, cube. And now I'm gonna grab a piece of black. So now I'm grabbing my piece of black craft foam and I'm going to do the same thing and lay it on here. I'm going to get this up here. Lay it on here. And those ends you can see curl up and then they rest. And I just take my hand and I just kind of rub my hand on the material and it's hot, but it's not like burn my flesh hot. You can see I'm just kind of patting it. To feel, I really want that middle area to warm up. And now it's starting to kind of lift a little bit. And sometimes you can kind of help it. Um, once it lifts, that's when I really want to... Oh, shoot. <laughs> well, <laughs> now you can see how much pressure is too much pressure. Let's try that again. And see, this is another reason why I like to stand up. Because I feel like when I'm standing up over it, my, my pressure is more centered, so I should have been standing up. But yeah, there you go. There's a mistake for you already. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Now I'm gonna stand up. And this time, hopefully, I'm not gonna push too hard. There we go, much better. And then I just grab it. That was a little bit of nerves, <laughs> I think, right there. Just kind of excited, nervous. 
and I'm just kind of hanging onto it until the material cools down enough that it's not going to stretch back or not hold its shape. And I'm just kind of rotating it. I like to do it just to kind of make sure that my, my all my sides are good. I am going to have to cut another piece of black craft foam because that was my other piece for the head because you want two pieces of black. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut this edge. And this time I already removed it, but I can see where I'm at. I know how much, but you could leave your piece inside still of the, I mean, your craft foam, sorry, your styrofoam piece inside of your craft foam until you were done cutting this if you wanted to have to be more accurate. Okay, now, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back in and I'm gonna cut it down. And the place where I press down has created a little bit of an indention and I'm just gonna make sure that that's on the back side. It's not gonna affect the quality of the craft. It's just, I don't, I, I like that to be on the, the behind surface, the back surface. A lot of times when you're using like a ball and you're making a face, um, having that in the back, it's gonna get covered up by hair that you make and stuff like that. Now I'm gonna grab my um, more precise scissors and I'm just trimming, not quite halfway on the cube. I would say probably about a third of the way. And I'm just gonna trim that down. And you wanna try to kind of keep your edges clean, um, but what we're gonna do here in a minute will help kind of hide any imperfections or um, like little jaggedy scissor snips or whatever. Okay. Elizabeth says that's so cool. I don't know. I didn't know that you could heat that stuff up and that it stretches. So that's one of the things I, when I first realized you could do that um, was with the shoes when we were making styrofoam shoe, shoes with the um, gnomes. I was like, oh, you can heat this up and oh, it is stretching around. That's pretty cool. All right. So now what I'm doing is I'm kind of tucking this a tan piece into the black to, to kind of add a little bit more um, tightness to it, if you will, uh, and to position it so that I know how much to cut. So I didn't take that tan piece off. I went ahead and left it on. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this as well. And I'm going to start with one, my initial trim, and then I may go a little... I will go a little bit further back here in just a second after I look at it. All right. Okay. I am going to go just a little bit further back. This has a really sharp point on these scissors. So again, I'm probably about a third of the way back on this one as well. All right, now what I wanna do is decide which side I want to be my top and my bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this side my bottom. And then I'm gonna cut a little U right here. But I'm gonna make sure I'm not cutting so far that I expose the styrofoam underneath. And nobody's going to see this, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I'm going to get a little bit further this way. Ah, went up too far on my hand. Okay, so there I have, oop, let me come down a little bit, just in case. So there I have a kind of a curve, and this is where my, is going to be the bottom of my head like my neck piece or my neck area. Okay, now I'm going to make cut, cut another foam sheet because I ruined the first one. So I am going to, just going to measure, I think, I think four by four, probably not smart. 
Here we go. There we go. So yeah, that is, yeah, I think four and a half. We'll do four and a half. Grab my pencil so I can mark. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to cut it. Make sure I'm at the end. Okay. And I know you probably can't see that very well, but I am going to cut on that line that I just made. And craft foam cuts very easily. It indents very easily, so you can use your your um, your pencil to make um, your marks and know for sure where they're at, which is really cool. Okay, let me put this aside, and hopefully I don't make that mistake again. So I'm setting that back on there. I'm going to go ahead and warm up my craft foam, and I'm actually going to flip this over because I like, I think this side is it looks cleaner. The other side was a little bit uh, messy looking. I'm going to stand up. And there we go. And then I'm just going to push this over. I'm just kind of holding that in place. That's okay that that came off. Okay, and this is going to be our cover for our head here in just a minute. So I'm going to set that aside for right now. We don't need that right at the moment. Um, now what I'm going to do is take this first piece. Get that out of the way. I'll need it a little bit later. Let me go ahead and push this button on here because it's going to beep at me. <laughs> you can tell I've gotten kind of paranoid about it because it is, it goes beep, beep. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take this um, super glue. Let me see, where am I at? So I'm going to take this super glue. Somebody was asking, they couldn't see it. This is Gorilla Glue. And this is my favorite one to use. I love it. And it has the brush tip, so I'm going to go ahead and use that side. And I'm going to wipe off all the excess. And then I'm just going to go inside right here. And I'm just brushing around the inside. Rotating my brush. So it really coats it. Oop. And that's how fast it sticks. It's amazing. And then I'm going to grab my little stick and just kind of roll, roll. It is amazing how quick this works. I absolutely love this super glue. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more. Wipe off my excess. Go right in here. And then again on this side. Right here. It sticks so fast, y'all. That's amazing. Especially for this type of project. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more. I don't know why I closed it tight because I still need it. Right here in the corners. Absolutely, Elizabeth. I for, it, uh, it was you that was asking. That's right. I remember now. I saw your comment right before I went live, and I thought, you know what? I will make sure and show it really good on camera. 
Okay, and I'm just rolling it into that glue and that really is helping the material to really just lay down, which is great. Now I'm going to take this back piece and lay it over and just kind of squeeze it in or tuck it in, I guess you could say. Okay, and this is where my bottom is now. I'm going to look at it. Make sure. Another thing that I've noticed with the craft foam is occasionally you'll have little um, pockets where air was trapped when they were making it. Um, I try to be mindful of that and not have those end up on my characters. It does still happen occasionally, but uh, just so you guys know. All right, now I'm going to take this material. No, oh. mm. I'm trying to decide if I want to cut it a little bit further back. And I think I'm pulling too, just a little bit. Closer to halfway, I think. I like that a little bit better. The, the most important thing with this part right here is just make sure you don't expose your um, your styrofoam as much as possible. You can fix some of it, but it's just easier if you don't. So okay, now we're going to take our um, super glue, wipe off that excess, and then I'm just going to go again inside around the edges. Get a little bit more and I like to go in where it's already open hold on just a second instead of I like to kind of look for an opening and then slip it down in there and you can't see that there we go so I'm coating it really good okay I'm going to take my little tool so I don't get it all over my hands and I'm just rolling it to get that to really lay on that glue and hold it tight. Just remember you don't have to get this specific glue but you want an instant grab or like this is a 10 second ball a 10 second hold or 10 second grab i can't remember exactly how it worded it but that's what you're looking for when you're looking for a good super glue for this project elizabeth you are so sweet i don't think i make it look easy i think i am a hot mess but that's okay this is hot mess crafting right <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to trim off this edge as well. You must have missed my, um, my accident, my boo-boo a minute ago where I... Um, broke my craft foam because I was pushing too hard. All right, I am going to go a little bit, um, I'm gonna cut a little bit more off. Actually, it doesn't matter on this. This is our front piece. So I wanna be mindful of where my, my neck is because that's gonna be my bottom. So I know the neck part that I cut is down here. And then I'm gonna grab that template piece that I made for the eyes. This is what we're gonna be working with. I'm gonna lay that on here. And this is gonna create that shape on our B. Let me have him real quick. So this is gonna create that kind of arched head shape right there. Okay. And then this usually takes me kind of a minute because I'm a little particular and I like to make sure that I'm about even and I'm giving myself enough. I just kind of feel, do it by feel. Okay, now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna outline, because I don't have anything white to show you, but I'm just outlining around the head so that I can see where I wanna cut. And we're gonna cut this part out. That's why that 
Uh, I recommended you didn't cut this beforehand because this piece you're going to want as a template. And I am actually going to measure and I'm just going down and kind of doing an extension of where I left off. It's probably better if I'm more direct. But I am going to measure for you because I want you to know how just in case because the temp, the pattern is not print has was not printing out well which I mentioned in the um, supplies video um, so this is uh, one and three quarters inches so 1.75 inches is how big how long the bottom of this is so that when you're trying to do this you're not having to guess on how big it is that way when you're printing it's not a big deal <laughs> made me jump too. Elizabeth said she did not see that. It made her jump and it made me jump too. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. And I am using my other, my precision scissors, I guess you could call them. And you could use your X-Acto knife for this part if you trust yourself. Okay, and then I'm going to go down here on this part. It's caught on my thumb and I have to fix it. I'm just trying to take my time with this so I don't make jagged cuts. All right, there is our B head. And you can just throw away that insert piece. I am going to end up trimming up this edge once we get it um, on here. So I'm only going to glue on the front at first. I'm just looking to make sure I like the shape and I, it's, I cut it a little different this time it looks like. It'd be fine though. There we go. Okay, so I've got one spot that's driving me crazy. It's right here. So I'm going to use my um, little tiny X-Acto knife and kind of straighten up that because I feel like that's going to draw you people's eye to that and I don't want to do that. So I want to kind of make a little bit better turn right here. Okay, look at it now. Oops, I still see a little spot. And welcome to crafting in Sarah's house, Sarah's brain, because I'm like, oh, I gotta fix it, I gotta fix it. And I will spend forever sometimes being super OCD about it, and I don't need to be, but in my brain I do. All right, so now we are on there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and flip it upside down. I'm going to take my super glue. Elizabeth said, may I ask you where you purchased your heat press and is it expensive? I don't have anything like this that uh, as a heat source. Elizabeth, you can always use an iron. Um, I did uh, talk about that in the supplies video. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to make sure I'm resetting that, that so it doesn't beep like crazy at me. Um, so, uh, you can use an iron, you can use a, a hair straightening iron, flat iron, um, or you can use something like this. The, I got mine on clearance two years ago. I guess they were coming out with a new model and, uh, I paid like 40 something dollars for it, but they are much, normally much more expensive than that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they usually cost, but I do know that it was significantly more expensive. I got it at Walmart on clearance and I just kind of, I'm always keeping my eye out for a good deal on clearance craft supplies. 
So that's kind of what happened with that. And I actually almost didn't even buy it. And then I didn't use it for two years. It stayed in the box because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. And I was just about to sell it. And then started making these craft characters. And I was like, oh, I've got that heat press downstairs in the garage. Went downstairs, got it out of the box, and it's been fabulous to use ever since. So I got to be kind of quick with this since that sets so quickly. Okay. And it's just on the front. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and lay these pieces down. Actually, let me cut it down just a little bit before I do. So I am going to trim around, and I think I've got to turn on my um, AC in here, guys. I'm sorry. I, hopefully it's not loud. Emily, if you will let me know if it's loud once it's on. But I've got to have some AC going in here. So it's on now. Hopefully you guys don't hear it super loud. I have a my little software, my Nevo camera. Um, it's great picking at picking up sound for the right reasons, but it also picks up sound for the wrong reasons, like the um, every tiny little bump and noise. So hopefully it won't be bad. Okay, so I've now trimmed off the excess, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and glue this down, so I'm going to flip it over, grab my super glue again, that's awesome, thank you Emily, okay, I'm going to go around that edge, Getting inside there. And then I'm going to grab my little skewer thing. I'll flip it over for just a second so I can see how this looks. I like to make sure these are kind of even. I don't make a big deal, but I still like to make sure it's pretty even. And then I'm just going to roll these up. I think I need to add a little bit more super glue on those spots, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay. I am super clumsy, and that's why I keep uh, going ahead and screwing the lid on because it's my anxiety in the back of my mind saying, Screw the lid on so you don't spill it everywhere. Because <laughs> I will bump it at some point, I'm sure. It's like a safety precaution. I love this little flat edge. It's great. You can get inside little air crevices and areas and spread that glue and stuff like that. I really like these little tools. Tiny bit more, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to just get a little bit of that glue on here. And I'm going to go right down. I need to add a little bit more off. I'm going to go in here and then just roll it up. I know it seems a little bit more time consuming to kind of do this part, but it really does, I think, um, it does make a, a cute effect at the end if you can get these parts laying down. Okay, 
So we have got that done. I'm gonna set that aside. And I didn't even screw that on this time, see? Silly me. Oh, and I see a little bit that needs to get laid down still. There we go. All right, so there's that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, what do I wanna do next? I'm going to set this aside and do the ball for a second. So you're gonna be needing, I don't need this big one, I need this little one. You're gonna be needing two pieces of tan or yellow um, styrofoam. And I'm going to start with one, and I'm just going to lay it on there. And I'm going to stand up. Whoops. One of the things I need to do is kind of smash that. I did not think about that. I almost forgot. Got it there. Whoop, come here. And now I'm just going to push and push, and then I'm gonna pick it up. And hold on to it. And this is just gonna do half, and then we'll, this will do the other half. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down. Throw that away, take this off, and I smash this down just a little bit better. So I'm just kind of smashing the body so that it's not quite so round. I didn't do it on the first character, on the first bumblebee, but I did it when I did the ladybug and when I did another bumblebee and I liked the look a little bit better, so I thought we would do that. Okay, I'm just gonna heat up that Second piece of styrofoam. Not letting it just yet. There we go. Okay, again, stand up. And then grab it and pull it tight. You did a much better job this time. Second go round, I usually do a better job for sure. Okay, now I'm gonna take my scissors, cut excess off. Get rid of that. And then I gotta cut down almost halfway. So you can use your finger to kind of as a guide and kind of mark on your ball so you know about where you want halfway to be. And this way you have a little bit of an invisible guide and it'll help you be more accurate. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. Now I'm gonna oop, I'm gonna use my ruler scissors. I did not really ever hardly use little scissors until I started working with the craft foam, and I tell you what, it makes all the difference in some instances, big time. I'm just following the line that I made, ish. I mean to be following the line that I made. And hopefully I don't make it too 
narrow to the inside. Then I'll retest it. I'll just put my little ball in there, make sure and it looks good. I did leave a little extra. I was scared. It's a lot different when you're doing it for yourself than when you're trying to teach somebody else and you want to do a good job. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to take this one and do the same thing, aiming for about halfway. So I'm going to use my finger. I'm just going to kind of mark. And it's okay that it's a little bit loose around the ball. It's not a big deal. I'm going to trim this up. I want to make sure that I can see my line. You probably cannot see it really well, but it's there. It's just kind of... I'm going to take the ball out because it's not helping me. And we will clean up our lines here in just a second. I'm curious, do I have any new people on right now? Or is it um, mostly my makers? I'd love to know. Oops, see, there it goes. I'd love to know if you're a maker or a... Uh, class taker. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so now that I've got my pieces cut, which this one I can tell is a little bit um, too much, I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. And I, the side, so I smashed it like this. And so that's going to be my front and my back, you can see. So the rounded part is going to be my up and down. The smashed part is my front and back. And I'm going to put that front in there like that. And then I'm going to take my super glue. And alternatively, if you don't have super glue, you can use hot glue. I, for everything that I'm showing you right now, I have used hot glue until I found a super glue that I really liked. So I had a couple that I had tried and they weren't sticking quick enough. And I would just grab my hot glue gun and hot glue them and it would work just fine. The only time I recommend not using your hot glue gun is when you're doing something directly on the face, right on the front. Oops. So I want to pull this tight, but I don't want to stick to it. There we go. All right, now I'm going to take my little thing and just roll it up. Just roll it on the table too. That works just fine. All right. So Elizabeth's asking if hot glue would melt everything. Um, no, especially if you're using your hot glue gun on your low heat setting, it should be um, just fine. I, I've not had any problems with it melting. Um, like I said, especially on a low heat setting, it'll still set the glue um, without melting the styrofoam. And this styrofoam is different than the styrofoam that's really porous that we would use on like our cone gnomes and things like that. Um, so it doesn't melt as quickly and easily as the other one did. So I'm just trimming this up. I'm going to keep going around until I get flush with the other end, just a little at a time. And I'm almost there on this part right here. And we're going to end up covering this seam up with um, foam, uh, craft foam. So don't worry. Just don't leave a big gap is the biggest, the, the biggest thing that's important. The most important thing. Goodness, I can't talk. Okay, I'm almost there. Get this out of the way. Let me look at it really quick. I'm going to go a little bit 
more around. I just want it to be more flush. That was a great question, by the way, Elizabeth. I appreciate it. All right, so now I have gone, I'm pretty much flush with the other side. So now I'm gonna take this off and I am going to apply the super glue to the styrofoam ball this time. I think this is a, hopefully not a bad choice. <laughs> we will find out together. And I'm not going to go all the way on the back. I don't need to. So I'm going to drop this down in there. And then I'm just going to press it up and get it to set. I'm going to trim off this one little edge that I can see that is over just a little bit. All right, here we go, get rid of this. And this is an actually, this actually is a really quick craft. Um, and I think that it, you know, not teaching it, it would go very, very quickly, it, it has for me. But um, just know that because I'm teaching you, it's a little bit longer. Okay, now I am going to take my head and my body I'm gonna put this on for now. Okay, so one of the things that's important, in my opinion, in doing this is I like to do a seam. This is really great when you're making your characters with hair too. And it depends on the character that you're making. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just applying some pressure and pulling on this, this may be a little bit too thick, I think, but we're going to test it out and see. And then I'm going to start right here at the base of the neck, and I'm going to go all the way around the head, and it'll create kind of that seam. And then I'm going to cut off a little bit more than I need. I like to give myself a little extra to work with. And then I'm going to grab my super glue. And I'm going to apply a little bit right here to the end. And then I'm going to go right over the edge, right up to the neck, and start there. And I'm about middle, I'm on the middle line area. And I'm making sure that I'm going to cover up that seam, that line from where we put the two pieces together. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more super glue. And I'm just gonna do a strip. So we're just gonna do a little at a time so that we can make sure it sets. And then, oops, I stuck my finger right in that dang glue. Okay, and you can see it's creating kind of a finished look to it. I think it's real cute. I like to wipe off some excess. I don't like too much on my brush personally. And I think I wiped off too much. I don't leave it in like really thick. I'm spreading it to where it's pretty thin around the edge. And then I like to hold it so that I can see where it's laying. And I try to line it up on that line. And then I'll show you what that looks like. And it'll lay down. Oops. There you go. You can see the front.
Okay. Now I'm going to add the last little bit. And I'm just going to lay it down to where I want it. And then I'll just snip off that extra. And I think I need to snip off a little bit more. Yeah, I'd like to snip off just a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm going to put it down there. Push it down. Okay. Just a second and I'll show you. So there's our head. Get that out of the way. Okay, now I'm going to take my body and... <clears throat> I'm going to line, and let me tell you, so if you struggle with cutting straight lines, I've got a hack for you. Um, I use one of those big paper, paper slicers. You can get them at Walmart. They're around $20, maybe cheaper. Um, but I just use one of those slicers, and uh, it is amazing. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about because I, I want to make sure that I'm a visual person. And I like to know what something looks like. So this hopefully will appeal to those of you that are visual like me. So this is what I'm talking about. It's a paper slicer or cutter or whatever you want to call it. And I like to just line it up however, however wide or thin I need it. And then I just cut right through the bone. And it does a really great job of giving me... A really clean line. So hopefully that'll be helpful to somebody who might struggle with making uh, straight lines. I know that I do and I appreciate it when I can find any little helps along the way. Okay now I'm just stretching and I have to be careful. I don't want to pull too tight and pull my foam apart. I have done that many 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 times. I get in a hurry just for any number of reasons I've, I've done it. So I like to take my time a little bit. And I'm just going back again, pulling it a little bit more. I may be able to get, I think I can probably get two, two little strips out of this. You can do two, you can do three. This little bee, he has three. Um, so we'll start with two, but I think three will probably be the sweet spot for me. I like to cut off the end because that's the part where I can't really pull it um, and then I start in the very middle so where we made our little seam I'm just going to pick a side to be the back grab my super glue or you can use your hot glue like I said when you find the right super glue it's a game changer it really is and I turned this because I like to go the direction that my um, foam naturally wants to curve and I'm just going to lay that right on that line and I'm going to try and keep it right on there the whole time. So you definitely want to make sure that your strip is going to be wide enough to cover that. Grab my super glue again, turn it over, try to make sure I stay on my foam and not on my uh, mat. So there, we're going to keep going. Wipe up a little bit too much. There it goes again. That's my warning. I think I it will go off in a minute, but I am going to try and remember to reset it as soon as I have my hands free. And again, you can use tan or you can use yellow. If you don't have the tan, don't you don't have to run out and grab it. 
Try using the yellow and see what you think on the craft foam. See what you think about the yellow first. You may like it more than you think. Okay, so there, that's gonna be our back and nobody's gonna see that because it will be underneath um, the wings. But um, I try to keep it pretty even. But that's our first little line. And then we're gonna start another one about right there. And this already had a little bit of super glue still left on it, so I just used what I had. And this is a little tiny bit trickier, this second part, uh, because we're going at a more of a curve instead of a straight line. So I try to pay attention to how wide I'm making it going around. So I try to keep it about the same width. And I go for about a fourth of an inch, I think. Maybe we'll just do two strips this time. I think that will be fine and it'll still look really cute. And it'll save a little time, but if you want to do a third one, you can absolutely do a third one. And I would do the third one the same way you're doing this one. I would do it up here. Okay, a little bit more blue. Went up a little too high right when I said that. Okay. Last little bit, and then we can cut this part off. And I am loving these nails right now. I tell you what, they are a learning. This is the first time I've worn nails in two plus years so there's definitely a learning curve but I really do like using them as a crafting tool they have come in handy I didn't know what I was missing all right whoa look there see I told you I knew I would knock it over and I didn't put the lid all the way on you see <laughs> okay so here is the start of our B right here now what I'm gonna do before we move too far forward, I'm going to, and I've already cut out my um, bee's wings, so just keep that in mind. And then you can cut out a little oval out of pink foam if you'd like, but I made a little nose on her, and I think I'm going to show you how to make this little nose because I think it's really, really cute. Um, just because maybe I'm making a mistake by doing that, but I really want to show you guys. I think it's it's cute and, and great. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to grab um, some chalk. I want to talk about this for a minute. And I don't think I talked about the chalk in the supplies video, and I didn't talk about the eyes, so I'll make sure and mention them uh, both. But, so I got this chalk I got at Walmart. And it's a, you want soft pastel chalk. You don't, for this particular one is soft pastel. I also enjoy using oil pastels. This is Crayola brand. I actually got these years ago when I first started doing mixed media. Someone, uh, one of my teachers turned me on to, I can't even remember who anymore. I want to say Petra. Uh, I can't remember, Stein is her last name maybe. Maybe that's who did it. But, um, these are not water-based. There are water-based, so you want to be mindful about that. The Crayola brand is, is, is 
portfolio, I think is what it's called. Um, this is a student grade, but it's a really good quality. I'm really impressed. I love using this. Um, I use this color all the time to shade on Flesh. This is a really great color. So, as you can see, I, I really like to use them also. I'm going to set these both out just to have my options. And then I'm going to grab a brush. this and this and then where did my other there they are okay so I've got those I also want to get some water Ooh, I'm gonna have to my water's pretty dirty so is my brush I should have got clean water before I did this but that's fine we'll make it work Hopefully I can get it to a place where it doesn't negatively affect it. Because that would be terrible. I recommend using a clean brush. Let's try this one instead. And these, this paintbrush right here, y'all, these are Crayola. They're over in the kids' uh, craft supplies in Walmart. They are cheap. They're like 2 or $3. I've been using these for years. I love them. Um, I'm hard on brushes, and I, they're, to me, they are really, really good. These are great, sturdy brushes. They're good quality, um, and they come in a couple different sizes. Here's the big red one, um, but I love these brushes, and I'll try and grab a picture and post it in the classroom after this so you guys can see if you're interested in these kinds of brushes. Okay, so now I'm going to open up my pastels, and... I'm going to go for, because this tan color, I either want to try this one or this one. So I'm going to grab a piece of scrap material. This is another great reason to hang on to your scrap. And I'm going to test it and see if I like this one better for my shading. I'm going to get it wet. And I bet you didn't know you could paint with chalk pastel. And I'm going to test it again and see if I like it. And this is the color that I'm going to use for this one. So it's like kind of a yellowy color. And it just I just like to see the contrast so it kind of looks like shadow. Um, so that's what I'm going for. Let me go ahead and grab my water. Hopefully I don't spill it. Please, Lord, don't let me spill it. Um, just going to get a little bit on here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the edge of my character and add some shading. You do not have to do this. This part is completely optional. It definitely will add character to your character. I highly recommend it, but I'm not gonna force you to do that because your character is your character. But you'll see how it changes the look of the character. And you don't have to get this Faber-Castell um, one from Walmart. They have a cheaper one that you could use as well. And you could absolutely use the less expensive one. I think it's like $5 for it. And this one was closer to 15 maybe or 10 um, But it's worth it for all the colors that you get in this one. But if you just want to start off with something, just start off with, with what you got. Or you could even grab your own eyeshadow. Um, if you guys have a collection of eyeshadows, some of you may not. But you could even grab your own eyeshadows and do the same thing with your eyeshadows and an eyeshadow brush. And I'm just going around the edge, like I said. And I'm even gonna go down here on the bottom, right at the neck. This is probably my favorite part because I think this is when your characters kind of come alive. And you kind of start adding the shadow and the shading. And then you can take a little bit of a Sharpie marker if you need to and go around the edge to kind of blacken this up again. I'm not worried about it. I think it'll be fine. I think it kind of has character to it. Now I'm going to take my styrofoam, my, my little body ball, and I'm just going to add a little bit to the top and bottom around this edge as well to create some shading.
And you don't have to do a traditional yellow and black bee. You could do a purple and pink bee or another color. I definitely want to encourage you to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and try and play. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I think crafting is how I play because when I try to draw and paint, I get really stressed out. I like it, but I don't allow myself to enjoy it so much. So now you can see the shading that's happening on this character, which I think starts to look really, really cute. I think I already said that, but let me just say it again. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more um, on this line down here. And you could even take a little bit of water on your brush if you wanted and make any of those uh, choppy spots go away. You can't see the color I'm using. I am so sorry. That is important to me too. I'm so glad that you um, said that. I am using this color right here from the Faber-Castell and it's got a little darkness to it, but it's just a little uh, orangey yellow is what I would call this. I'm going to get a little bit more, go around the bottom, making sure I'm staying in camera view. It's very important to me. Thank you, Brenda. I did not realize you couldn't see that. And you can kind of tell when you need a little bit more uh, water on your brush. And I'm just running my finger along the edge just to kind of soften up some of the edges a little bit. And then I have a little hard edge right here. I'm just going to use my brush and kind of smooth that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. All right, and you can even do the same thing on the face. Just to kind of smooth some of those edges and yet leave that shading. So there's our shaded face. Now I am going to Grab some blush. Let me get this out of the way so I don't spill it. Okay. Um, do I want to put the body on yet? I think it's probably time. Let's go ahead and put the body onto our character real quick. Let's go ahead and get this little tiny bit that I see. This is just using some of the wet side of my um, paper towel where I unloaded some of my chalk so that I could clean up that edge a little bit. Okay, so now in order to make the hole, I'm not going to just take a pencil and jam it. I'm going to use that skewer piece um, because it is a good size. Uh, let me do one more little run through right here. Okay, so now I'm going to go right here I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to show as clearly as possible right up on the edge. And this is also right in the middle. And I'm just gonna go straight, straight in. And I'm only going about that far in, which I would say is probably close to two centimeters. It is an one, one inch inside. So that's what I want one inch of my material inside of there. And then I'm gonna take the same thing and I'm going to do it at the top, and I'm going to go one inch inside as well. I'm trying to see if I want that to be the top or that to be the top. Let's just look and see. I think I like that. Where's the back? There it is. Yeah, I think we're going to go with that. Okay, so now I'm going to go straight down right in the middle. And I only want to go about, well, not quite. I don't think I want to even go about an inch. So that's probably a half an inch, I would guess. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another one of these, which actually I have a barbecue skewer. I think I want to use that because I think it's a little bit skinnier. 
have a broken barbecue skewer. Hold on, let me look, let me look. Let's see. That is still too big, is that? That's too big, okay. So I'm gonna use this broken barbecue skewer, okay, because I want the, the thinness of this. I would also recommend using a toothpick, but um, you can still use this. I just know it's gonna be a little bit harder to cut. Um, grab my wire cutters, because that's what I like to use. You could probably use scissors as well. Um, something fell. I'm gonna go in. Okay, and then, yeah, I'm just gonna go in. Hold on. Let me, I'm gonna add hot glue this time to this part, and I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit. And I'm doing it to where enough comes out. I wanna see some come out of the top because that, that needs to hold onto my glue, my uh, skewer. Now I'm just gonna twist my skewer into the hole. So I've twisted, it's in there. And then I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this. I'm gonna cut off more than I need. I'm doing this so that I can get an idea of how far I pushed before. So that lets me know that I need to cut off about that width of material. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off about that much. Ooh, and there it went. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side and I'm going to squeeze in a little bit of hot glue. Enough to where it comes out because this is what's going to lock that in place. And then keeping in mind where my back part is, I'm going to go ahead and push this in and twist. And then I have a little string. I'm just letting it dry before I pull it off. And that is our little body. Let me grab some tweezers and I'll pull off this because my nails don't work for that, unfortunately. There we go. Got it. So there's our little B and B body, B head and B body together. Set that aside. Now I'm going to grab my blush. You can use a pinky blush or a more red blush. And I think on her, Actually, I think on both of them, I used the pink, more pinky. So you could do this one. Let's see if you can see this. Hold on. You could do this one, or you could do this one. And I think we're going to go ahead and go with this pinky, this really pink. So I'm going to set this one aside. Grab my brush. I'm going to start with... Let's see. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to load my brush, and I always test the load on my hand before I ever touch anything, before I ever touch my craft. Okay? And then I like my features to be lower on the face, so I'm going to go like right here, and I'm just going to kind of go around in a circle and just let that kind of smooth out. And then I'm going to pick up some more. Test. Okay. And then I'm going to do right across from there on the other side. And alternatively, you could use chalk if you wanted. If you have a pink pastel chalk, that would work just fine. All right. I think I was even lower last time. I swear. My bee head is bigger this time than it was last time, but that's okay. That's all right. All right, so now I am going to grab some eyes 
And for this particular character, oh, let me see if I can find them. Uh oh, I had them this morning. Ooh, you tell me where they went. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Well, we'll just have to go with a different, some different eyes because I don't see the eyes that I had this morning. And when I pulled them out from the supplies, it looks like I've lost them, which makes me really sad because I really love those eyes for this particular character. But that's okay. We're gonna make it work. These are the smallest ones that I have aside from those other ones. So we're just gonna try it out. All right, so now I am going to, and I used these for the little um, ladybug anyway, so this will be fine. I know they're cute. I just hate that uh, I don't have them. Man, that's, that's frustrating. Oh, well, I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just You just kind of have to play, play with it for yourself anyway, but um, I am going to try these out that one. and I'm not pressing if you notice I'm not pressing them down right now because I want to make sure that I like the placement first before I place them okay let's take them off and try another direction just to be on the safe side Get there we go. That sticky sticks to everything. I like these eyes for the bee. That's actually really cute. Okay, so now that I, I like them um, where they're at, I am going to go ahead and glue them down. I'm going to grab my exacto knife if I can find it. I think I put it somewhere. Man, where did I put it? Huh. Oh, there it is. It was hiding. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of super glue. Okay. I'm gonna lift this eye up. Oops. Add a little bit of glue to the back of that. Hopefully don't drop it. And then press it. I'm gonna let it rest. Grab this other one. This is where nails do not come in handy. Okay, oops, dropped it, but at least it landed on the front side. Add some super glue. Even though these are sticky, I still want the super glue on there because I'm going for a permanent bond. And then I need to rotate this. There we go. And then I want to make sure they're about even. Okay, I'm going to let it rest for a second. I'm going to press. Okay, so they're put on. Now, we want to add our little um, wispies. So we want to add some eyebrows and some little eyelashes. And for that, I need my liner brush and I cut it down and I'm hoping it will still work how I want it. If not, I'll try something else. So always test on something safe. I'm going to grab 
this piece of material. Oh, looky there. Grab this piece of material to test it on. I'm going to load my brush and then drop off a little bit. I always test my little lines before I lay them. Because if it's not going to do it how I want, I would rather make the mistake on a piece of safe material. Let's see if this one will work better. If not, I have an alternative. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, this is going to work great. Okay, so I'm using, this is a, it says Royal brushes. It's a number one liner brush or a thin brush. I got this in a set at Walmart. Um, you could use another liner brush if you can find it, but I recommend a number one at least or the long liner brushes. All right, so now let's get this out of the way. I am going to come here in the bottom corner of the eye and I'm just going to add a little a little like that. I'm going to have to get a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm going to come around just a hair down here. Okay. And then I'm going to come on this side and do the same thing. And I try to make sure that I'm about even. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to come around just a little bit like I did on the other one. Okay. And then I'm going to add the eyebrows next. Making sure you guys can see. And I'm just going to add a little eyebrow here. And a little eyebrow here. Like that. Okay. And then I have a trick to do the little mouth. Okay, I grab that little um, nail tool that I was talking to you about earlier. That's what I like to use for the mouth. So let me get this out of the way. Again, I always test first to make sure it's going to be the size I want. So I'm using this nail tool and I'm using the larger size and I'm making a dot and pulling. Dot and pull, dot and pull. And I don't know how I feel about it yet, so I'm going to try another couple times just to be sure. So I don't know if I want a little bit smaller. So let me see if you can see. I'm going to do a dot straight down, and I'm pulling. Dot. Oops. Dot. Pull. So that's going to give us our little bit of a mouth. A little mouthy shape. Um, I do have another size. Let me try it really quick before I make a final decision. As a matter of fact, it looks like this is the one I originally used. So let me load it. This is a little bit smaller, and this is one of the one the dotting tools that are in the Amazon store that you can you can get. And this it doesn't have a size on it, but this is like a medium of the ones. I don't know if I like that. I think that'll work. Okay. So we are going to try that. Hopefully this goes well. Okay. Trying to make sure I'm loaded. All right. See if I can get it in an angle where you guys can see this really good while I'm doing this without getting, without making a mess. All right, I think I got black on my finger. So I'm going to dot straight. And then I'm just going to pull it up. Okay, hold on. I know it looks kind of funny at the moment, but bear with me. We're going to make it look super cute. 
All right, this out of the way. Now I'm gonna take, while that's drying, I'm not gonna mess with it. Matter of fact, let me take my heat gun, which is another thing that's great to have. I'm just trying to set it a little bit so I don't hurt it. And you can make your um, bee heads a little bigger, a little smaller, however you want to do it. You could even do it round if you wanted to instead. In a similar fashion to the way that we did the body, um, where we did the seam in the middle and then the line, the seam would just be right here and you would do your, your cover-up line. Okay, now we're going to do our nose. And this color that I'm using for the nose is Folk Art brand. Sorry, it's hard to see on the camera. So it is a matte Folk Art brand. And the color is, it's 6451 Vintage Tea Rose is the color that I'm going to use for the nose. Okay. And then I am going to use my dotting tool for this as well. And I am going to make the nose right here. I'm going to almost do it like if it was a heart. Okay, and you could just do a dot if you wanted to. But I'm going to do like that. And then I'm just going to pull it down just like that. Okay, and I am actually going to turn this over and clean up my line just a little bit. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth says so adorable. So I'm going to go here and my line is a little round. So I'm just going to pull that material, that um, paint just a little bit because there's plenty. I'm going to do it on both sides just to clean it up a little bit. And there you go. Okay, now I'm going to add the freckles really quick and the antenna, and then we're done. Let me put the lid back on here. Freckles, I just like to use a folk art white. This is, I think, a titanium white. I'll tell you for sure. And you can make a different mouth for your bee. You don't have to make the same mouth as me. You could do a little side smile like I did on my little um, uh, ladybug completely up to you. Okay, I'm going to use the big side of my dotting tool. And then I'm just going to put three little dots. One, two, three. And it looks like I need to load again. So before I do the third one, Ooh. three. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Look on it. Why are you doing that on this side? So I'm going to do one, two, three. Okay. And you could do smaller freckles if you want. You can do bigger freckles if you want. You don't have to do the freckles if you don't want to. Completely make it your own. Let me put the lid on this. Let's add the wings. So I do need to turn my, oops, yay, it was closed. I need to turn my heat press back on for a minute. And while that's heating up, I'm going to do the antenna. So this is just wire that I picked up from uh, Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut off a little piece. Got to get that off first. That was loud, sorry. And I'm going to take about that much. So one, one round curve, one circle, if you will. Grab this, and I'm going to cut this in half. That way I know I have about even antenna. They don't have to be perfectly even because it's kind of a wonky little bee. 
Oh, Elizabeth says the freckles definitely add to the cuteness. I think so too. I think so too. I love adding freckles. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is start on one end. I'm just going to curve that little um, antenna around and we're going for kind of a wonky uh, look. So I'm not wanting it to be perfect. This is one of my favorite things is that I don't have to worry about being perfect. So I just don't, I don't focus on it, which is great. And then I'm going to come up here and I want to go, oops, I'm going to have to cut a little bit of this off. And I'm probably going to have to do it on this side too. Okay. So now I'm going to come up here at the top. And I think last time when I did this, I just was able to poke it in, but I want to make sure. Yeah. So I can just poke it in, but I still recommend gluing it once you get it to where you um, want it to be. So I'm just going to poke it in. And then you can just curl it down. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I want to make sure my antenna is going the opposite direction. And I noticed that on this one, I got I went above the eye. So on this one, I'm going to go above the eye as well. That way they're about even. And they're also about the same distance apart. And I'm just going to poke that in. And you can kind of play with the antenna how you want them. I think they're very, very cute. You can use different wire. I, like I said, I just grabbed mine from the Dollar Tree. All right, now I'm going to grab my wings. This is the template from the wings. And then I'm just going to lay this on here. And I do see, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let's see. Uh, there we go. There's a little hole in this one. So I'm actually going to use this side on the outside. And that's going to go right up. So I'm going to lay it face down the side that has the hole in it. I'm going to just lay it face down. And it's going to kind of curl these wings and I'll show you how I'm going to shape them as well. So that's one of the great things about um, craft foam is that you can mold it when it's warm. Okay, so now I'm going to take my fingers, my thumbs, and I'm kind of telling the craft foam how I want it to curl. And then if you don't want too much in there, you just pull it back out a little bit. But it's completely up to you how, the shape that you want your wings to have. If you want them to be straight, that's perfectly okay too. Now I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to the back. Let me test and see where I want it to be. So I really like it just like that. So I'm lining it up in the back so I can see where I want to put the glue. Okay, perfect. So it's just going to go right in the middle. Right on that hole. Or pocket or whatever. And then I'm going to lay this over and just lay it right in the middle. And I'm going to kind of move it up and then tuck that little wing underneath there. And there is our little bee. Now let's talk about how to do the bottom. So if you want to make it to where you can put it on a pencil or in a planter, you're going to turn it upside down. And just like we did the top side, you're going to poke a hole right in the middle. And I'm going to go in pretty good. Okay. And then I'm going to take my pencil or whatever you want to call it. Let's see. I don't think I have any. I don't have any pencils. So I guess I'm going to use this one. I put her on a skewer or not a skewer on a dowel rod, which I think looks really great. Let me zoom out now. Okay, so I put her on a little dowel rod. She'd be great inside of a planner or a party deal or whatever. Um, and then he is on a pencil. So let's just do what I've got. Got a dowel. Let's see what size. I think this will work. All right, so we're going to just take this. You don't have to sharpen the end of it. Um, you can just, where you made that hole, you just push it in and you know, notice I'm twisting, okay? And I've gotten to where I want. So now I'm going to take that back out. I'm going to add hot glue. You could, if you wanted to, you could add super glue. Um, I like the hot glue. I did enough to where I came out of the hole. Now I'm going to coat my my dowel rod and then just go back in the hole 
And then now you have your little bee on your little pick, or now you've created a pick. All right. Elizabeth said, are we going to learn to make the ladybug too? Yes. So Elizabeth, the ladybug, and we'll be, we'll be doing a ladybug, a dragonfly, a butterfly, and I may even do one more in the series. But yes, those will be done in the Makers Club for June. So if you want, if you're not in the Makers Club and you want to do some more characters, um, this is the perfect time to join the Makers Club. I have lowered the price. It is um, $29. $29, I think, right now. So, um, and I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to keep the uh, Makers Club membership open to new members right now. So, um, now's the time. If you want to get in, I recommend doing it. But we have a lot of fun in there, and we make a lot of really cute things that you can then turn around and sell. Anything that you learn from me, you are more than welcome to sell. I highly encourage it. All I ask is that you don't take what you learn from me and then use my content to then do the same thing like I guess whatever anyway <laughs> but um thank you so much for uh hanging out for this class I really hope you enjoyed it I can't wait to see your bumblebees or other characters that you choose to make and uh yeah you guys have a great time thank you so much let me know what you thought of the class I'm curious especially anybody that's not taking a class from me I'd love to know how you felt about it um and I'd love to see your characters y'all have a really great day thanks bye